This video explains how to convert data to the appropriate data type using the type convert function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. For the first example of this tutorial, we first need to create some example data as you can see in line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object is appearing, which is called x1. And we can print this vector to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three. And then you can see that our vector contains different numbers. However, if we check the class of our data object using the class function, as you can see in line five of the code, you can see that the character class is returned. So currently the data class of our vector object is the character class. However, since we are dealing with numbers, we would probably prefer to work with the integer class or with a numeric class. And for that reason, we can apply the type.convert function to our data object, as you can see in line seven of the code. And in this line of code, I'm applying this function to our vector object x1, and I'm storing the output of this in a new data object, which is called x1 underscore convert. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see at the top right that a new data object is appearing, which is called x1 convert. And if we print this data object to the bottom, you can see that the same numbers are contained in this new data object. However, if we check the class of this data object running line 10 of the code, you can see that the class of our new data object is the integer class. So as you have seen in this first example, the type convert function has converted the data type of our vector object to the most appropriate class. However, if we insert different data to the type convert function, another output is returned. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 12 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm slightly modifying our example data. So what I'm doing here is that I'm using the values, or in other words, the numbers of our first input vector x1. And then I'm adding to this the letters a, a, a and I'm storing the output of this in a new data object, which is called x2. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object is appearing, which is called x2. And if we print this vector object to the bottom in the RStudio console, you can see that this vector contains the same numbers as our first input vector x1. And in addition to that, an element which contains the character string aaa. Once again, the class of our input values is the character class, as you can see by running line 15 of the code. And then in the next step in line 17 of the code, I'm once again applying the type.convert function to these data. And I'm storing the output of this in a new data object called x2 underscore convert. So if you run these lines of code, a new data object called x2 underscore convert is appearing. And we can print this data object to the bottom by running line 19 of the code. And then you can see that this time our data object looks exactly the same as the input data. And the reason for that is that our class is still the character class. And the reason why we are dealing still with the character class is that our new input vector contains the letters AAA. And for that reason, the type.convert function has kept the character class. So as you have seen, depending on your input data, the type convert function converts your data to the most appropriate class for these data. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.